Hey guys, welcome to the Liberal Hive Mind, a channel solely focused on exposing the abundant hypocrisy of the left. Such little scoundrels, you know, little weasels. We are living in an era where journalism doesn't really exist anymore, at least mainstream journalism. You know, I'm not going to say that people don't do incredible journalistic work because they obviously do, but most of that work is happening within the world of independent media. People like Glenn Greenwald. Now, I guess Catherine Herridge, as she's been fired and let go from her CBS post, James O'Keefe, the list goes on and on. Matt Taibbi, there's all kinds of great journalists, but they aren't part of this mainstream media cabal, you know? That world has become so incredibly perverse, so incredibly corrupt, a world that has been infiltrated with dishonest, horrible actors who will say anything and do anything to promote a narrative, and of course, on the back end, attempt to get away with it. Oh, whoops. Did I accidentally slander a whole group of people, cause division, hate, and political violence with my fake news reporting and lies? Oopsies. You must have just misinterpreted my words. See, I used the word allegedly. I didn't say it explicitly. These people are awful. They're just simply awful. They're scoundrels. They're weasels. And one of them made a horrible, horrible mistake recently. I mean, such a bad mistake. He showed up on the Joe Rogan podcast, a place where, you know, being a dishonest little actor, it just ain't gonna work. Let me show you guys exactly what happened as a woke left-wing journalist just got exposed beyond belief on Joe Rogan's podcast. We got some stuff to get into, so let's roll the tape. All right, folks, so let's just start off and play the clip. I'm just gonna present the clip by saying, as we know with these woke lefty journalists, the narrative is always the most important thing, so it doesn't matter what you're talking about. All roads always lead to the white supremacist boogeyman. Take a look. Archaeologist Flint Dibble says, Hancock's claims reinforce white supremacist ideas, stripping indigenous people of their rich heritage, and instead giving credit to aliens or white people. Actually, I've never... Did you really say that? No, I said that this idea of Atlantis, the way it goes back 200 years, it has been used for those reasons. So, so are you saying your quote is incorrect? I think that it's editing me out of context, Graham. I've yeah. never called you a white supremacist or a racist. No, no, you've, how, said, how you've does... said that you... Hang on, that's because... That's because you're very, if I, if I may say so, very slippery in the way that you deal with, because you know perfectly well, you know perfectly well that saying that my work uh, encourages white supremacism uh, is, uh, and, uh, and encourages racism is going to end up with me being tarred as a racist. And you know very well oh, that tarring somebody as a racist in this day, look, the results there, down there, Make no mistake, Hancock is a white supremacist like Trump. Look at this, there, but it's racist this fiction title. pretending to These be These are science. not my words. But Look, no, I, there, you I'm cite, talking about your influence you on media and culture. You cite 19th century sources. You cite 16th century sources. Yeah. And I label those as racist. And I see it as a problem to... Uh, to readapt those kind of sources without critiquing them, because this idea of a white Atlantis is what existed in the 19th century. I have Ignatius no such idea. Don but you might not. But you're citing those sources on Why should I not cite and them? And I never make that the foreground of anything that I write. I put that in there as a paragraph, and I say he should not be citing these kind of sources without critiquing them, because they do the harm. But this is something that is a very nuanced subject. Mm -hmm. And when you say that it reinforces white supremacy. Again, I said the sources do. Right. But you, but go back to the quote, Jamie. But go it's back stripped, to the tweet. It's, but listen, but you, this, 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 this quote here, reinforce white supremacist ideas, stripping indigenous people of the rich heritage and instead giving credit to aliens or white people. None of those things are true. I know. But, Graham but, doesn't but, even talk about aliens. Right. But and why, so did that's you why say I'm, that? I said that not in specific relation to Hancock's claims, but in specific relation to this narrative of Atlantis that has gone back hundreds of years. Right, but that... As Dibble, but here's the Guardian. So they're misquoting you, are they? As Dibble states, such claims reinforce white supremacist ideas. They strip indigenous people of their rich her heritage and instead give credit to aliens or white people. Why didn't you get the Guardian to put that right? Well, I don't. Did you actually what say that, right. though? I did not say that Graham reinforces white supremacist ideas. As I've said, so this the quote history, is not real. Uh, they strip the the stories of Atlantis. Yes, and I think that that's an issue. So, Graham, you go around the world to megalithic sites, right? So the quote, and, the quote, reinforce white supremacist ideas. That's not yours. No, that's not a quote. It's not in quotation. Right. It was in the other article. 
That's what I'm getting and to. Again, they strip that, indigenous people of their rich heritage and give credit to aliens or white people. Well, in short, the series promotes ideas of race science that are outdated and long debunked. And this is yeah, your own... Say. Right, but this that's is your not own, his quote, This is though. your own article, Flint. Here you are. I'm quoting from... That's a quote from your article uh, published in The Conversation. This sort of race science is outdated and long since debunked, especially given the strong links between Atlantis and Aryans proposed by several Nazi archaeologists. You are associating me with this, and you are attempting... To no, get me I'm asking you to effectively. distance yourself from that. Is but actually that's, what but, I'm uh, trying to do. But that's not do. what you're doing, though. You're, I, you're associating him with that, clearly. Yep, you heard it there. I guess now archaeologists who disagree with mainstream academic narratives or academic consensus, well, they're now white supremacists. How utterly ridiculous. And you see how they use wordplay to try to avoid accountability. Oh, well, I didn't actually say that. No, but you alluded to it. And then, of course, all of your friends at all these mainstream media left-wing tabloids promote the narrative. This is what they do, folks. Somebody becomes powerful, somebody gets, you know, outsized influence, in this case within the world of academia, and that person must be taken down a peg in the most horrifying, slanderous, destructive way possible by casting them as a white supremacist, a racist. That is one of the worst things that you can be labeled. It's career ending. It's kind of life ending. Not in the sense that you're going to actually lose your physical life, but in the sense that, you know, how do you come back from that? You can't get a job. You can't really integrate back into society properly. If most of the people think you're a white supremacist, you get shunned and exiled. But left-wingers have no hesitation, no qualm with attaching these labels to people in the most dishonest and divisive and destructive manner possible. Then when they're held accountable or when they're challenged on their garbage ideas, well, that's not actually what I said. And it's not my fault that it got so out of hand. No, you literally said it. You literally did it. You know, it's the same thing that we see over and over again. All paths lead to my white supremacy narrative. You know, we saw the exact same thing with the Covington kids, for instance. Innocent children, good kids from a good school on a field trip, get harassed by a professional agitator activist, a known controversial character and liar, a guy who, you know, built his public persona on stolen valor and straight up lies. He walks up to the kids, instigates them, they do literally nothing, and the entire mainstream media apparatus, because of the visual dynamic of the kid wearing a Trump hat, and the other guy being a native, they build this whole white supremacist narrative around it and slander and destroy a kid's life. They did the same thing with Kyle Rittenhouse. They've done it over and over and over again. And when you ask for accountability, there is none. Oh, well, we didn't actually say it outright. We didn't actually claim that he was a white racist. No, but you alluded to it. You fabricated a sort of false dynamic that then went viral and spread all over the media and spread all over the internet. And so essentially the damage is done and now you're attempting to take a step back and pretend as if you bear no responsibility. You know, make big claims like the Covington kids are MAGA racists who harassed an elderly, innocent person of color, cause untold damage and divisiveness, and then walk away from the situation. You know, these journalists are like the Joker from the Dark Knight movie, blowing up the hospital and then walking away. Well, huh, just another day on the job. We see it over and over again. Remember, they were claiming that Kyle Rittenhouse wasn't just a white supremacist, but that he was part of right-wing militia groups. It's insane. And of course, they did the same thing recently with Gina Carano, who subsequently got fired from her job. She was one of the highlights of the show that she was on, Disney's The Mandalorian. But through the pandemic, she had an issue with government overreach. She compared what was going on to what happened in Germany in the 1940s, and they labeled her a Nazi. It's completely insane. I mean, they're still doing it. This happened on Bill Maher's show like two days ago. I like this picture. Uh, who was the woman in The Mandalorian? What did she do? She liked something? Or... She was a Nazi. Oh, that's different, yeah. right? I'm thinking of somebody else. Well, she's not a Nazi. She, she, yeah, she was, she's, she's a white. A she's See, look at that. She's you say you're calling her hair. a Nazi. She's, she's called other people Nazis. Right. So she's the Nazi. Okay, everyone's yeah. a Nazi now. Yeah. Um, she does hang with white yeah. supremacists. It's like a Mel Brooks she does. Movie. Yeah. These people make these horrible, libel claims. We're talking about clear defamation, slander. And it's not just something that affects the individual. It's something that's affecting, you know, our cultural cohesion as a whole. It's something that's affecting political divisiveness and race relations in the West. And so it's even worse than slander and defamation. What these people are doing is evil, yet they pretend as though they're the saviors of society. You know, as if that guy from the Joe Rogan podcast is saving native representation in history. Give me a break. You know, people pretend as if white savior complex is this sort of altruism, as if they care so much about oppressed groups. 
but they don't. They only care about themselves. They only care about their image. They only care about these petty squabbles and their attempts to take people down that they're jealous of, frankly. It's all for personal gain, under the guise of altruism. Once again, a woke leftist journalist is completely and utterly exposed as a malicious liar. Anyways, that's pretty much what I got for you guys. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to leave a like and possibly subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.